Hello, scholars, and welcome to Mr. Chambers Teaches HMH Into Math for 5th grade. Today we are working on Module 1, Lesson 3. These are pages 13 through 16 in your Unit 1, Module 1 through 9 workbook. In this video, we will review the objective, spark your learning, build understanding, and step it out problems for this lesson, as well as a few select questions from Check for Understanding and On Your Own for review. Feel free to skip around in the video to find help working on the particular problems you may need help on. Today we are working on Lesson 3 for Module 1. Use a pattern to multiply the multiples of 10, 100, and 1000. Our objective for today is that I can use mental math to find the product of any two numbers that have one non-zero digit and are multiples of 10, 100, or 1000. To start off in our Step It Out question, we have 60 students participate in a jumpathon, and each student jumps rope 400 times. What is the total number of jumps? We know that we have 60 students, and each student is jumping 400 times. For problem A, what multiplication equation models the total number of jumps? To find out the total number of jumps, I'm going to multiply 400 times 60. To find my solution here, I count up the number of zeros that I have. I have two zeros in my 400 and one zero in my 60. So I'm going to go ahead and put three zeros as my answer. Now I'm going to multiply my six tens times my four hundreds to find that six times four equals 24. This gives me a total product of 24,000. To help us get to the solution, we're going to do problems B and C to figure out the steps that I took to get there. First, we complete the multiplication fact of 6 times 4. 6 times 4 gives us a product of 24. In number C, we're going to use the fact to complete the pattern. Starting with 6 times 40, which is equivalent to 6 times 4, times 10 to the first power. 6 times 40 would be 240. This gives our 24 from our original equation, plus 1 zero that is represented by 10 to the 1 power. That 1 exponent tells us that there is a 1 zero that comes after our 24 to make 240. Next up, I multiply 6 times 400, this is equal to 6 times 4 times 10 to the second power. By showing that it is 10 to the second power, that tells me that I add two zeros here, and then I complete my original equation of 6 times 4 to find 24. 6 times 400 gives me a product of 2,400. Lastly, the full problem, 60 times 400, is equal to 6 times 10 times 4 times 10 to the second power. I can swap my 10 over here and my 4 over here. So now the problem looks like 6 times 4 times 10 times 10 to the second power. 10 times 10 to the second power makes it 10 to the third power, leaving me with 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24, and 10 to the third power means that I add three zeros giving me a total number of jumps of 24,000 jumps. Turning the page now to page 14, we have another step it out problem that we are going to do together. For problem number two, 50 students each jump rope 2,000 times during the jumpathon. So, we need a multiplication equation that shows the number of jumps completed by these 50 students. Our multiplication problem is going to be 50 times 2,000. To find my product, I count up the number of zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll write my four zeros here. Then I multiply 5 times 2, which will give me a product of 10. Put this all together, and that gives me that these 50 students jumping 2,000 times earned a total of 100,000 jumps. 
But to help us step it out, we're going to do the fact and pattern here in pattern B, starting by multiplying our first non-zero digits, 5 times 2 gives me a product of 10. 5 times 20 is equal to 5 times 2, which is 10, times 10 to the first power, which means there is 1 more 0. That gives me a total of 100. Next, 5 times 200 is equal to 5 times 2 times 10 to the second power. The second power means that I have two zeros behind here, and then I add in my 10 as my product of 5 times 2, making it 1,000 jumps. Next, I do 5 times 2,000, which is equivalent to 5 times 2 times 10 to the third power. We know that 5 times 2 equals 10, and multiplying times 10 to the third power means I add three more zeros for a product of 10,000. Lastly, following the same pattern, now I'm multiplying 50 times 2,000, which is equivalent to 5 times 10, times 2, times 10 to the third power. I can swap my 2 and my 10 so that I have 10 times 10 to the third power and 5 times 2. My final equation will be 5 times 2 times 10 to the fourth power. We've already established that 5 times 2 equals 10, and 10 to the fourth power means I add four zeros behind this, giving me a total of 100,000 jumps. For today, we're going to be working on the even number problems for check for understanding and on your own. The first problem, number two, we are going to be multiplying 70 times 600. For this problem, I can count up the number of zeros that I have, one zero for my 70 and two zeros for my 600, meaning that my product will have three zeros after it. Now, I multiply my seven times my six. 7 times 6 gives me a product of 42. My total answer for this problem is 42,000. Another way that I could represent this is if I multiply 600 times 70. When I'm multiplying like this, I start with my 1's category. My 1 is a 0, so I multiply 0 times 0, which gives me a product of 0. I multiply 0 times 0 for another 0, and a 0 times 6 for another 0. Zero. This brings me now to my tens category. Multiplying by my tens, I start with a placeholder zero here because I am no longer multiplying by my ones. Then I do seven times zero for a product of zero, seven times zero for another zero, and then seven times six, which would give me 42. Both ways show that my end product is 42,000. Now, on to question four. Don't let this trip you up with the blank being before the equal sign. Remember, the equal sign just means we need to balance out the left and the right side so that both sides are equal to each other. In this problem, we are multiplying 80 times 50,000. To start off, I can count the number of zeros represented in this equation. I have one zero in my 80 plus another one, two, three, four, for a total of five zeros in my solution. Then I multiply eight times five to give me a product of 40. Altogether, this gives me a total of four million. Another way I could represent this is by multiplying 50,000 times 80. Starting with my ones, zero times zero is zero and zero times anything will always give me a zero. So as I multiply zero times all the place values in 50,000, I get a lot of zeros. Moving on to my tens, I know that I put a placeholder zero in the ones because I'm no longer multiplying by my ones category. Then I multiply eight times zero for a zero. Eight times zero, another zero. Eight times zero, a third zero. And eight times zero, another one. This leaves me with multiplying 8 times 5 for a total product of 4 million. 
Either way I come upon my solution gives me the same product of 4 million. On your own, we are going to continue with the even number problems, starting with problems 6 and 8 on this page, and then I'll show you how we do 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18 on consecutive pages. For problem 6, we are multiplying 6 times 9. 6 times 9 gives us a product of 54. Now, if I do 6 times 9 times 10 to the 1 power, that means I have a 0, 1 0, behind my 54 for a product of 540. Next, I have 6 times 9 times 10 to the second power. That 2 as my exponent means I have two zeros back here, and my product of 6 times 9 is still 54 for a total of 5,400. Next, I have 6 times 9, which is 54, times 10 to the third power, which means I will have three zeros afterwards for a total of 54,000. Next, for problem 8, we are multiplying 5 times 4. 5 times 4 gives me a product of 20. Then I multiply it times 10 to the first power, which means I add a 0 to the end for a total of 200. 5 times 4 times 10 to the second power means that I have two zeros here before I put my 20 for a total of 2,000. 5 times 4 times 10 to the third means I place three zeros behind my 20, making it 20,000. And lastly for this problem, 5 times 4 gives me 20, and 10 times 10 to the fourth power means I have four additional zeros behind my 20 for a total of 200,000. Next, we're going to do problem number 10 which asks us to find the value of the open square. This open square is our algebraic thinking in solving for the unknown. When we are solving for the unknown, we need to solve everything that we can in order to figure out what the blank box is, that blank box being an exponent, a multiple of 10. To help us out, we work on the left-hand side where we know that we have 40 times 700,000. 70,000. My apologies. We count up the number of zeros that we have. One in my 40 plus another one, two, three, four for a total of five zeros behind my product. Then I multiply four times seven, which will give me a product of 28. Place my commas here for a total of 2,800,000. So this needs to equal 28 times 10 to the nth power. To figure out what this nth power is, I can count the number of zeros that I have in my product. I count that there are five zeros here, so this would be to the 10th power. 28 times 10 to the 5th power. So the missing square has a value of 5. Question number 12, I'm now finding the value of this empty square and the problem of 30 times blank equals 21 times 10 to the 6th power. 21 times 10 to the 6th power can be represented by having 6 zeros and then I multiply 1 times 21 for 21. 21 million. Now, to figure out what this blank is, I need to divide both sides by 30. When I divide by 30, I can take off a 0 from here, and I divide 3 into 21 to find that this is 700,000. 700,000 times 30 would give me a product of 21 million. So the value for the box is 700,000. Moving on to question number 14, we are multiplying 400 times 80. Count up the number of zeros that I have here for three zeros. And then I multiply eight times four, which gives me a product of 32. The 
This gives me a product of 32,000. I can show this again by multiplying 400 times 80. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 4 also is 0. This brings me down to my tens place where I'm multiplying 8 times 0. But I first start off with my placeholder 0 because I'm no longer multiplying by my ones. I have 8 times 0 for 0. 8 times 0, 0. 8 times 4 gives me 32. For a total of 32,000. Either way that I do it, the product is 32,000. Question number 16. Multiplying 30 times 7,000. I count up the number of zeros that I have for a total of four zeros. Then I multiply 3 times 7, which will give me a product of 21. Place my comma after the first three zeros for a total of 210,000. I can also represent this by multiplying 7,000 times 30. I'll start with my zeros in my ones place, which will give me a whole bunch of zeros as usual. Then I move to my tens place, put a placeholder zero here because we're no longer multiplying by our ones. Multiply three times zero, three times zero, and three times zero. Then I come to three times seven and multiply that to get 21 for a pro product of 210,000. Lastly, we have question number 18. A shipping company buys 60 trucks for $30,000 each. What is the total cost of these trucks? To figure this out, I will multiply, I will count up my zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I will multiply the first numbers together. 6 times 3 gives me 18. Place in my commas for a total of $1,800,000 for 60 trucks. Carrying on to page 16, we will now do problems 20, 22, and 24, and work those out. For problem number 20, it says, 30 other students participate in the jump-a-thon. And they each jump 600 times. What is their total number of jumps? For this problem, I'm multiplying 600 times 30. Count up my zeros. 1, 2, 3. Then multiply 6 times 3 to get a product of 18. 18,000 jumps were completed by these scholars. Question number 22. A store sells 50 basketball backboards and stands. Each one costs $700 each. How much does the store earn from these sales? To calculate this out, we are going to multiply 700 times 50. Count up the number of zeros, three zeros, and then I multiply 7 times 5, which gives me a total of 35,000. And our last problem for today, we have this expression of 3 times 10 to the second power times 9 times 10 to the third power. When I see parentheses, I do what's inside the parentheses first before multiplying them together. 3 times 10 to the second power is equal to 300. Over in my second parentheses, I have 9 times 10 to the third power. This is equal to 9,000. So I am trying to figure out what 300 times 9,000 is equal to. I can start off by counting the number of zeros that I have, place my five zeros here, and then I multiply 3 times 9 to give me a total product of 27. Place in my commas, and this is 2,700,000. This concludes our video on HMH into math for fifth grade. I'm Mr. Chambers, and I thank you for taking the time to watch this video to improve your math skills, and I look forward to speaking to you again in our next lesson, Module 1, Lesson 4.